First question came from Javo. He said, with the deadline approaching, I saw that Cooks, Claypool, and Judy might be on a block. So which receiver you think they should go after? Oh, out of those three, Cooks is good. Cooks is an established guy, but Cooks is also, he's a little guy. He's, he's what, 5'10". And not to say he can't play bigger, but, I mean, I just, I, I really don't think the Ravens need another smaller receiver. I don't. Uh, Chase Claypool, I, I know Steelers ain't trading Claypool to the Ravens um, Because he, he got the size But Sometimes the uh, Yeah, no Not Claypool uh, Jerry Judy He's like he like 6'1 um, So he ain't the tallest in the world uh, Good speed Good separation um, Sometimes his hands can be inconsistent though That's the one thing about I love Jerry Judy so much I wouldn't be mad if they traded for him now Because the big plays are there But sometimes he can have those those simple drops the concentration drops the drops where it's like wow he dropped that but then he had a catch where it's like whoa he caught that um so with judy i, I think um if they traded for jerry judy i think the way that he could benefit most um on whatever team he was on but well if it was with the ravens if they traded for jerry judy which i would not be mad at the volume would have to be upped in the passing game it would have to. And this, because this has an impact on players like Rashad Bateman. Um, it did. It had an impact on guys like Hollywood, Jerry Judy. Um, if guys got their drops, like, okay, because guys are going to have their drop. Well, not Devin Duvernay. He don't be dropping nothing. But besides Duvernay, guys are going to have their drops. And that's cool. Mark Andrews, he got his drops. But with Mark Andrews, why we do remember the drops? A lot of times we forget about most of them because he makes so many catches and gets so many yards and touchdowns, etc. With Rashad Bateman, we remember the drops because he ain't getting that many targets, yards, and da-da-da-da-da. The volume ain't going crazy like that. So with Hollywood, he did have his drops, but then he, he also got a good amount of yards too. But it was kind of a lot of both. I think the drops with Hollywood, since they came at some crucial times, that's why a lot of fans remember those. But you see what I'm saying? If, if there's less volume for a receiver, then in a receiver who may have some drops every now and then, if there's less volume for them, those drops are going to hurt that much more. They're going to hurt so much more. But if it's a receiver, and they, yeah, they drop every now and then, but they getting volume like that, and they obviously making a lot more plays than they missing. Okay, you can live with the drops. But if the Ravens are gonna trade for somebody, then yeah, you you gotta be invested into into the passing game a lot more than they are. Um, and I know every game is different, but I don't know. We, I I wouldn't mind it, but I just they would have to change a lot of uh, what they do in the way. Uh, that they do it, and I mean they can change that now. They don't. They wouldn't have to wait to to trade for uh, this receiver, that receiver, and a third. They wouldn't have to wait to do that to change what the way that they do things. They don't gotta wait. They can do it now. So why not? I, yeah, might as well, right? He said. Also, what moves do you want to see us make by the deadline? Just being a better football team overall, starting from within. I got plenty of moves I would love to see them make, but everything, it, it, the, the best move that the Ravens could make, it would start from within. Uh, and that's fixing their own mistakes, getting out of their own heads, getting, getting rid of all the, just the silly stuff, man. The silly stuff, the simple mistakes, fixing that, because that can go such a long way. And, and being a more complete football team, playing more complete football. Um, some of that is getting healthy, but a lot of that is just getting right, man. Straight up, it's just getting right. And the Ravens are not right right now. Uh, he said, I'll be shocked if we do anything. But us Ravens fans know we'll be getting a lot of Ravens came close news. I don't know if I told you this, but I know other subscribers has. But thank you for great content and clean content. You're great inspiration to our youth and adults. Keep up the amazing work and I hope God continues to bless you on your journey. No, I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that a whole lot, man. A whole lot. Um, and I know you, 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 my guy, you always send in a million questions and, and I, I always appreciate it. So thank you for that. Uh, and he had sent in another question. He said, you're the GM and Lamar is in your office about his contract. What is your pitch to him about the changes you're going to make to help him grow and get a championship and also how much you're going to pay him? 
I couldn't, if I'm the Ravens GM, I could not pitch him on changes that I would make. Because if I'm, I, I got to think of it from Lamar's point of view. What changes have I made as a GM while Lamar has been here? None. None. I could tell him, hey, Lamar, I'm going to go get you a number one wide receiver. How about that? Would you like that? I'm a, if you sign this contract, then I'll get you one. But Lamar could be like, hold up. I was on a much cheaper deal for these past five years. And what have y'all provided for me? Well, what's going to change if he signs a deal? So I, I, I couldn't even sell him on change. I couldn't sell him on that. I would have to actually put the change in motion. I would have to actually show him action and not just words. So, I, yeah, I, I couldn't even start with that about changes. He said, you're going to make, uh, what changes are you going to make to help him grow and get a championship? Well, the offense has changed. The whole philosophy is changing for me. If I'm the GM, the whole philosophy, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it out the window straight up. I know it's had success in the past past. But recently, no, I'm getting rid of that. And I would actually show him. I would say, you know what? Look, look, give me this offseason because I would be the new GM, obviously. I say, I would say, give me this offseason. Watch what I do. We're not even going to talk about a long term deal. We do the franchise tag. But it, I say it wouldn't even be out of disrespect for you. It would be more so out of let me show you what we how much change we can make in a year. For me to show you how much I'm invested in you. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave Right and grave Frustrated, and I know she is because she ain't sending the question in a minute. Next question came from Tanja. She said, Hey, Graven, I just watched the Browns and Ravens game. Defense coming along, that's great. However, the offense is horrible. Lamar's stats are going down every week. How can you be lighting the league up in an MVP conversation now, four games in, and you can't get anything done on offense? We know this is a copycat league, and Andrews is being taken away in every game now. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart for teams to do. Take Mark Andrews away and make the Ravens beat you another way. Somebody got to step up. Uh, he said, we also know that Roman is creative in the run game using Andrews and then Lamar. All that was cute. But in the passing game, Andrews had two completions and I think Duve had two. Bateman won and he missed one. He missed uh, one Broche one. Uh, how is Harbaugh allowing Roman to have one receiver on the field and three tight ends? Uh, who is getting open on the perimeter that is so easy for teams to defend? Uh, another play, Roman decides to roll Lamar out to the left and had all the receivers on that side of the field. Now, Lamar throws across his body, taking one half of the field. Uh, why is he throwing left? Lamar is not even left-handed. What are we doing? Lamar also drained in his presser. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He mentioned he only threw the ball 16 times today. How can he get hot or in a rhythm with that output? Yeah, man. It's all about volume. Volume. Volume is the name of the game. In the, especially the passing game She said receivers can't get into a rhythm If they're on the sideline And popping in and out of the game uh, People say we are complaining about the offense Yes we are because it's horrible The offensive line got manhandled this game So Roman draws up these long extended plays Instead of putting more receiver sets on the field And creating ways to get them the ball Harbaugh is choosing to allow this madness to happen We can get D-Hop or any other elite receiver It won't matter if we don't get a creative offense mind in here To help our guys Lamar is disgusted And the receivers are disgusted Harbaugh better make some changes quick This buddy buddy system will be the Ravens demise Had the vent have a great evening. Hey, Tanja, you too. I find this offense offensive. Next question came from my guy Rodell. He said, we won my guy. I should be happy, but I'm disappointed and unimpressed. Yes, the NFL is a tough league, and you absolutely have to take the wins when they come, no matter how you get them. However, number one, I don't have to say Lamar Jackson is not playing like a $300 million quarterback. We all can clearly see that. He will get his money when the time comes, and this has nothing to do with that. What I will say is LJ is an elite talent and what most would consider a top five QB and generational talent. With great power comes great responsibility, and some of the mistakes LJ continues to make, you would expect them not to still be mistakes this far into his career. 
I'm not asking them to be perfect. No one is perfect. However, what happened to the three-step drops, read and react? What happened to seven-step drops, read and react? These 20-step drops LJ is doing are hurting the offense more than helping. LJ dropping back 20 yards and not throwing the ball away if nothing is there is hurting the offense in several ways. We are already struggling in most uh, cases to gain 10 yards on first down. Uh, so second and 15, third and 20 aren't helping. Please read and react, but more importantly, throw the ball away. And yeah, volume, volume. Um, I think when when the volume is so low, you try your best to just make anything happen. Cause especially the the way that the flow of the game is going, depending on what game, especially this past game. But you trying your best, like man, when am I gonna get another chance to make a play? I gotta do it. And yeah, you're right. There, there got to be more times where he throws the ball away. It all depends on the situation. Um, you can't play hero ball all the time. Sometimes playing hero ball is really just saving yourself, saving yourself uh, and living to play another damn. Uh, number two, he said, just like LJ, uh, this O-line isn't perfect, but it also isn't the worst. Sometimes the O-line breaks down and LJ has to be Superman. Other times the offense holds its own and LJ still does his 20-yard step back, where instead he can step up in the pocket, check read one, check read two. And if nothing is there, then he should throw it away. I understand maybe more than not the line breaks down, but my thing is, if you're not going to take off as soon as you get uncomfortable back there, throw the ball away. And again with that, same thing. Same thing, a lot of the same stuff from uh, part one of this. But, and I think another thing too is that he's he knows himself. He's seen himself make so many of those plays. He's seen it where stuff breaks down and he scrambles around and whatnot, and then somebody comes open finally, and then boom, uh, it's a big game. Um, so I think that's always in the back of his mind. But in this past game, it just really seemed like the coaches told him, nah, don't, don't, don't do that. Just, just manage the game. Don't try to be a hero. That's what it seemed like. Number three, this offense looks horrendous. And I don't know if Lamar Jackson is looking for the big play every time he drops back or our receiving corps is trash and can't separate. I believe it's the latter. It's no way EDC stands on that sideline every game and is perfectly content with not adding something. I'm not understanding how Steve, EDC, Roman, and Hobbs are not agreeing that the offense is not good and are barely making it right now. It's no way we stand a chance in the shootout. We have to make a move. It only makes everyone on this offense's job easier. It opens up the field and playbook and what makes all of this worse is that there are several wide receivers being made available for the sake of LJ Andrews and every Baltimore Ravens fan Judy has been made available Claypool has been made available Brandon Cooks and I'm sure DJ Moore has a price that will make Carolina change their mind please go get one yeah and like we said earlier from the jump of this episode it really starts from within too time to be honest in Raven I mean I thought he's always had to be honest over here next question came from my guy Gold Morano he said it doesn't it feel good to get a win after coming so close to yet another fourth quarter double digit lead meltdown Lamar had another less mediocre day and so as we are now very close to the season's halfway mark I feel it, that it's time to start asking the big question before I do uh, I like to say that I'm holding out hope that EDC understands that he will never get Jerry Judy with one of those lightweight offers especially with Aaron Rodgers beating down his GM's door for receiving help question number one do you expect that Justice Hill will be suited up and play zero downs after that fumble so close to the goal line in the fourth quarter. No, I actually think, I don't think he'll go in a doghouse. I actually don't. Reason being because you don't have J.K. Dobbins. Who you got? Kenyon Drake, Mike Davis, who you're not a fan of, um, and Gus Edwards. You got Beatty on the practice squad, but yeah, man, you, you, you're down running backs. Um, so I... I I don't, I don't see him going to the doghouse. I really don't. I think that Harbaugh may actually give Gus, I mean, excuse me, give Justice a pass. As crazy as that sounds, and for what happened, it sounds even crazier. So we'll see, though, man. Question two, do you still stand by your 12-5 and five prediction after I predicted a 9-8 and eight season with the remote possibility of a 10-7 and seven final record? Oof, 12-5, and five, and the Ravens are, what, 4-3 and three right now? So they would have to be almost perfect to get to 12-5. and five. It ain't looking like it right now. It's, it's really not. He said, question three, most of us love Lamar and want him signed long term, but can we agree that based off the outcome of the games played thus far that he is not living up to the profile of a QB who can command a $240 million contract? But then again, neither are Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, or Russell Wilson. Although there's a lot of season left, I believe that it is safe to say the Ravens are winning this negotiation standoff with Lamar as of now. Do you see a trade coming this offseason, or could Lamar actually reduce his asking price? Oh. I don't think he'll reduce his asking price at all. Um, but the, as far as the part about the trade, I, I've I've continued to say this, man. I just I I don't see 
because from from beginning, my thing, I, I just didn't see if the Ravens didn't want to pay him back then this offseason, whatever he wanted, whatever that was. I don't see them being like, all right, well, the price is higher now, so we'll, we'll pay him whatever now. I just I don't see it. And the way that they've constructed this team, um, the way that they've uh, hired the coaching staff, uh, the, the players that they've gotten, the players that they have not gotten, the, pos the positions that they really uh, went hard for and the other positions that they haven't went so hard for. It just doesn't make it seem like they invested in Lamar Jackson uh, for the long term. So right now, I just I, I, st I still don't see it, man. I, hope, I would love to be wrong. I would love it, but I just I do not see. I don't see Lamar Jackson, the Ravens agreeing to anything long term, man. This question came from my guy Flirt Nowinski. He said, "What's good, bro? Uh, back again. Hope all is well with yours." And I'm sending this mid game. Mm, let's see if this was a mistake or not. He said, "Just let Lamar uh, go, trade bait, and Andrew. oh yeah, he yeah he was done." He said, "Just let Lamar go, trade Bateman and Andrews, hump Peters away. They don't deserve this. This is disgusting. I don't care if we win. Our line is so bad. You know I'm positive, but we cannot hold three rushes for one second with six blocking. That's inexcusable in so many ways. We will not be able to beat anybody good. You can't even blame Giro. He's dialing it up, but one second against three rushes when you have six blockers is disgusting. And like all my hopes are right now, I'm out. Mm. And he said that at, at halftime, mid game." Mm. So I wonder if his thoughts change afterwards, but probably not. Next question came from my guy Dominic, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, "What's up, Engraven? I just watched the 2012 Super Bowl team speeches with the current players, and a couple things stood out to me. One being that everyone talked, everyone talking said that they need to believe in one another. Something I think this team struggles at. People try to do other people's job, and it causes mistakes. The main thing I took from their speeches was that they all said they believed in the coaches and trust what the coach is saying. Now I know this may be pushing it, but is that a coincidence that they all said that, knowing the current state of the Ravens are in? Is it that Harbaugh is trying to gain the team trust back? Let me know what you think. You said it." You said it. That's exactly what I think it is. I, I think that Harbaugh is just really trying to get this team back because it seems like he may be losing them a bit. Well, actually a lot. They're not all lost yet, but it seems like this team is just, it seems like they are so close to unraveling, even with the win today. It seems like they're close to unraveling. So I just think that was Harbaugh pulling out all the stops being like, hey man, like I got to do something. I got to do something because I don't know if they really hear me like that right now. Help is not on the way. Next question came from my guy Plex. He said, uh, we're not making any trades and there isn't a free agent available on offense that will help this team. Hey, what about Deshaun Jackson, baby? But anyway, uh, he said, it is what it is until the offseason. I want Greg gone more than Plankton wants the Krabby Patty secret formula. I don't think letting him go midseason does us any good. There isn't a coach on staff that can help the offense. It's built horribly. Why do we have five tight ends? Why do we only have one receiver on the field on 65% of our plays? We need a new scheme. I like how Philly runs their offense. Their receivers are leaps and bounds better than ours, but they run the ball as much as we do, and they primarily run out of the spread. Uh, they keep receiving threats on the field at all times times we have Oliver and Ricard on the field at all times again starts from within it starts from within the biggest change that the Ravens need to make it starts from within and the last question on this episode came from my guy Nazarene he said what's good big bro hope all is well fam oh yeah everything is good man he said I enjoyed your pregame live too keep it up my guy appreciate you so look I'm not impressed with the win but I'll take it for sure yeah I think everybody's pretty much on the same boat with that I think we all share the same sentiments. But anyway, he said, defense did his thing. Can't nobody cap on that. Offense is trying to find its identity. It was a beautiful struggle to me, though. I'll also be seeing them receivers creating space for themselves. Man, them boys elite, man. Duvernay and Bateman will be a dynamic duo next year. Or maybe in the playoffs if we get there. <laughs> Very high possibility if the receivers and Lamar can get on the same page. Uh, this game showed me that. Rashad Bateman, five targets, four receptions, 42 yards. Devin Duvernay, three targets, two receptions, 42 yards with Andrews shut down. I watched Duvernay in college. He's a deep threat. And Bateman is a route-running beast. I'm telling you, man, they're stars. Uh, if we get a top 15 receiver, we have to trade someone because everyone is not going to eat. Matter of fact, hold up. I realized something. When you take away Mark Andrews, Greg Roman, and Lamar targets the receiver. So... That lets me know that they are working hard and trying to hit the receivers. But as I was saying, if we are going to trade for a top 10 to 15 receiver, we would have to swap a receiver for whoever he is that y'all want. Yeah. Uh, and, and draft picks, too. But the person that you would trade would be a Tylen Wallace, uh, James Prochet. You get a top receiver. No, you still keep Bateman. You still keep Duvernay. Obviously, you still keep Mark Andrews. You just add that top 10, 15 receiver to the mix. 
and keep those guys too. So yeah, you ain't, ain't got to give up some anybody who you're using. Anyway, he said um, Edwards is a dog. Yes. Lamar having a dominant running back uh, there with him helps our run game explode. Shout out to Gus. We have some ballers on this team. Seems like we don't have a game plan and we don't take advantage of what the defense gives us. Also, our run defense is top five now, more likely. Really? It was six last week. It was? It was that high? I didn't think it was. I thought it was like super low, but okay. Uh, Clark is not as good as people think. I've been seeing a lot of people say that they don't really think Chuck Clark is all that. Um, but anyway, Geno Stone plays like he is scared to tackle or he can't tackle. Justin Houston definitely makes our life better. Yes, he certainly does. Um, teams like throwing towards Geno and Clark. Uh, back to the receiver stuff. Like, how you do that little switch up like that? Uh, we have to use our receivers. Andrew should be used as a safety blanket. Reminds me of Jason Witten, how clutch he can be for us. Uh, feed the receivers and let Andrews actually play like a tight end. We will kill if we spread the ball. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Because if you spread the ball, then you make that money. That you make that much more weapons out of everybody, so it becomes less predictable. Uh, he said, uh, there's other stuff I want to say about the defense, but I will check the facts before I give my opinion. Oh, by the way, the local news was showing some fan tweets. It was embarrassing, to be honest. Why would any real Raven fan promote that Lamar should leave us and go elsewhere, <coughs> excuse me, or go somewhere where he can get help? That man is a Raven, period. Till he leaves this team, he's a Raven. Well, yeah, that's technically true. <laughs> but he said, uh, if your favorite team is the Ravens, do you just want him to go to the actual team you like? Rep your team. Don't camouflage yourself as a Ravens fan because we have Lamar. Got this fan base looking real bad, man. If you're the Falcons fan, rep your team. Say you, just give an example, are a Lamar fan, but watch the Ravens and you want Lamar on your team. Just saying. Keep it real and keep it clean. Enjoy your week, fam. With that part, we're Ravens fans um, who have been encouraging Lamar to go to another team. It's just them being straight up, man. Because they feel like this team, like the Ravens, they, the Ravens have not. And it doesn't seem like they will maximize Lamar Jackson. It doesn't. It doesn't. And so many fans, they see so much potential in Lamar Jackson. It's like, man, we've seen that potential scratched at times. But it's like we haven't seen it fully brought out. And under this Ravens staff, this philosophy, I don't think it ever will. I, I me, That's me personally. I don't think it ever will. So that's why so many people say, oh, now nah, Lamar, go somewhere else, man. Go somewhere else. We don't want him to go somewhere else. We want him to be a Raven forever. We love Lamar. But when you see the way that this team is constructed and the way that they go about things, it's like, man, will, will they ever really bring out the best in Lamar? And it looks like no. But he also said Bateman did not have a bad game. Whoever said that got a chill. He dropped one pass. He averaged 10 and a half yards. Yes, basically doing what he does, which is move the chains. Two first downs and the longest catch was 26 yards. Rather people like it or not, Bateman helps this team. Oh, yeah, Bateman certainly helps the team. And and I um I did see a lot of people say, oh, yeah, Bateman had a bad game. Uh, but then I rewatched the game for myself. I'm like, oh, that's, I think, because so many people remember the drop, obviously. But um, since the volume... Again, we talked about it earlier. With the volume being so low, it just makes the drop stick out that much more. Doesn't excuse them, but it makes them stick out that much more. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy. Shout out to Graven.